Welcome back to another episode of Life After Service, and today we're talking about resumes. So as you transition out of the military, one of the first things you're going to have to do uh, when it comes to job searching and applying is to create your own resume. Now for people that join the military straight out of high school, this might be the first time that you've ever had to create a resume. Resume, sorry. Uh, I know for me, that was the case. Um, they do all the briefings and all that as I was going through the out processing uh, process. But, you know, a lot of people, as they go through that stuff, they're not really concerned with the the information in the briefings. They're just thinking about getting off and what they're going to do after work. Um, but they do give you handouts and stuff like that during a lot of those briefings. So if you're getting ready to go through that process, I definitely recommend holding on to that information. Otherwise, you're going to be searching on Google, trying to find all these different resources uh, as you create your own resume. So uh, today we're going to go over a few different tips. I'm going to show you uh, some of the bullet points that I have and how I transition them uh, from the kind of the military slang and jargon into something that civilians can understand. So the first part of the job search process is trying to figure out exactly what type of jobs you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up um, a screenshot of just a sample job on Indeed. And I'm going to show you what you should be looking for during that. All right, so you see here that this is a, uh, we're on Indeed. The job we're looking at here is for operations research analyst with Facebook. And the first thing you want to be doing is going through this and reading the whole description and looking for different keywords because those keywords that you find that kind of repeat or kind of in bold or highlighted on the job posting, you're going to want to put those in your resume because especially if they're using something like an automated tracking system where there's a ton of applicants coming in, if you don't have a lot of those keywords on there, you don't need necessarily every one, but if you don't have at least a few, then it, there's a good chance that your resume may not even make it to the human eyes. So the machine sees that there's no keywords or stuff like that that match and automatically tosses your, your resume out. So that's the first thing you want to avoid uh, is not even being able to, to have a human view that resume. Uh, so again, that's why we want to look at these keywords here. So looking at this, looking through the description, we see strong quantitative analytical skills, data visualization, building strong partnerships, and then coming down to the bullet points they have here. Again, we see quantitative skills, operations, data science, engineering, dashboards, reports. These are all different skills that you'll find. Uh, and if you have them, you don't want to put it word for word, especially if that's not a skill that you've ever worked with. Uh, because that employer is going to find out either in that, that interview or shortly thereafter that you don't have that skill. So definitely don't lie when you're when you're going through this stuff. Um, and again, we're just looking for those things that kind of pop out or repeat here. All right, so again, we see data visual, visualization. You see the different programs with that, Tableau and Looker. See a few different computer programming languages. So you see SQL. Python and R, and again, different skills, probability, prevalence, measurement, and so on. So again, all we're looking for is those things that, that repeat and stick out. Normally, the higher they are, uh, as far as the bullet points, the higher they are up in there, the more important it's going to be uh, and more relative to the job. So definitely pay attention to those top two or three bullet points that you see. So once you have those, you find those ones that repeat. Uh, write those down, and then from there, we're going to implement that into your resume. So now that we have those keywords from the job posting, what we want to do is start drafting different bullet points that we're going to use uh, within our resume. So what I'm going to show you here are two different bullet points, and I got these from uh, one was during a, a NCOER or an evaluation report from the military, and the other one was a bullet point from uh, a recommendation for an award. So I just want to show you how lengthy that can be and how we can change that up to make it more, again, civilian friendly. All right, so you see here, the first one we have is the NCOER bullet point. 
and the way it's written in the uh, the military document is selected over three sergeants in the section to compose, send, and monitor reporting, utilizing command post of the future system during Warpath 3. Now, when a civilian looks at something like this, the it's it's super confusing to them because they don't they don't know what half of this stuff is. They may not know uh, the rank structure. They don't know what a sergeant is. Um, they most definitely probably don't know what a what a command post of the future is or the system uh, behind it. Uh, and Warpath Three is just uh, it's it's one of the exercises. So again, they look at that and it's going to be super confusing, and they're really going to have no clue what you did. So the bullet point you see below this is the one that I use on my civilian resume, uh, and again, it's based off of that previous bullet point from the NCOER. So directed a team of da data analysts in distinguishing key operational capabilities via data visualization during large-scale planning operations, influencing executive decision-making. So there's a few things you see here with it, and you kind of want the same format when it comes to any of the bullet points you're going to be writing. So the first thing you want is you want it to start out with some type of action verb. So here we have directed, it could also be led or managed, spearheaded, uh, any of those. Then you go into exactly what you did, team of analysts using certain systems. And again, you see data visualization here, just like in that Facebook posting we just looked at. This is where you want to start inserting those key, uh, the keywords that you find in the, uh, the job posting. And then finally, you want some type of result from it. So you have your, your action. Uh, you go into a little bit of an explanation of exactly what you did and then what the result of that was. So that would be influencing executive decision making. Again, you can expand on this, but keep in mind you don't want to make it too lengthy, especially if a, a human, you know, from human resources is, is reading through this. They're not going to read through it if you're writing entire par paragraphs and your resume is three or four pages long. You know, they may be looking at 50, upwards of over 100 different resumes. So they're going to glance at it and Nine times out of ten, they're not going to take the time to read everything in its entirety, especially if you have three or four pages as a resume. So just another kind of tip on the side is as you're creating resumes, I would say one, maybe two pages at the most, condensing down to the most uh, pertinent things that relate to that type of job. So next one we're going to look at here uh, is the bullet point from an award. Uh, and you see here that it's just excessively long it's, it's pretty much a paragraph by itself uh stating a squad leader assigned to patrol base minden 200 missions different types of things that happened during that uh, the missions and then just a little bit extra superb leadership safely operate in high threat areas and a location and then a, a result of that and again no one's going to read this entire thing so your job is to condense that down to take all that jargon and terms that a civilian isn't going to understand and turn it into something that they are. So looking at this one here, again, back with rank structure, um, they're probably not going to know what a squad leader is. They're not going to, they're going to have no clue where patrol base Minden is. 200 missions is okay, but I'm not going to include all the different things, counter indirect fire, counter smuggling, transition teams. They're not going to know that. So this is what I, uh, what I came up with. Uh, kind of condensing that down. So planned and led 200 plus operational missions to accomplish collaborative strategic objectives, simultaneously managing $5 million in government assets. Now, I know the $5 million part wasn't in there. That's just based off another bullet point uh, that I kind of wanted to combine into this. And that, another thing you want to look for is as you're going through this, they're going to want to look at numbers. The more numbers that you have, especially if it's something that's results oriented whether you're saving money uh, or you know you're in charge of a certain amount for a program they're going to want to look at things like that because that shows responsibility and it kind of puts a concrete number on exactly what you've done now we're going to talk about the different types of resume formats that you'll most likely work with as you create your own resume so the first one's going to be kind of your traditional resume format based off of chronological order from your most recent job uh, down to the, the least recent. And then the second one is a functional resume. This is more applicable if you're moving into something like a new uh, industry or different career. 
that kind of highlights on your strength and your skills uh, instead of the different jobs that you've held in the past. So first one, again, we're going to look at is that traditional resume. All right, so you see here, this is uh, just a template of it. This is one that I, I came up with. Uh, I'll link it below as a Google Doc. I will say that uh, transferring it between a, a Word Doc and a Google Doc, there were some kind of formatting issues that kind of took some of the margins off. Uh, but if you want to, just use it as kind of a reference as you build your own resume here. So first thing you see is, of course, a name. And then below that, you have either a headline, which is a real quick one-sentence summary of uh, your experience in different uh, industry that you're in. Um, or instead of that, which what I would prefer that you do is to put the job title of what you're looking for, the job that you're actually applying for. And the reason for this goes back to that automated tracking system is as that uh, as a computer scans through all the different resumes, it's going to pick out those keywords. And one of those ones that they're going to look at uh, is most likely going to be the actual job title. So again, this is just another way that it kind of matches your resume to the job posting itself to help make sure that you don't get weeded out during that selection process. So next to that, you see that we have uh, the basic contact information. So you definitely want to have your email and your phone on there. Make sure it's recent. And then when it comes to your email address, don't have uh, the email that you created in, in high school, you know, smoker69 at gmail or something like that. You know, employers going to see that and, you know, who's going to take you serious with that. So make sure it's a professional email. Even if you got to go, I would uh, recommend just going onto Gmail and just creating one with your name. Um, and if, if that's taken, you know, add a, add a number at the end of it. Uh, Jonathan Griffith three at gmail.com or something like that. Um, if you have LinkedIn, I would recommend putting your your link here and i definitely recommend hyperlinking it because once a, a human does see that it's gonna you know it's, it's way more convenient for them to to click on a link they're not they're, they're not going to open a browser type in letter for letter the uh the url itself so make it easy on them if you want them to, to see your linkedin profile or any of the other types of uh links make sure that you hyperlink everything for it and if you don't have a linkedin yet uh, we're going to do a, a video in the future on how to create one and kind of optimize it for employers. But I definitely get that process started uh, as soon as you can. Just, you can find, again, a lot of other resources on YouTube and places like that. Uh, but get that LinkedIn going. And then, of course, city and state, you're going to want that on there. Going down from there, next one we have is a summary. So just like the bullet points that we have, you don't want this summary to be one or two paragraphs long. This is a super short, uh, kind of how someone would sum you up in one or two sentences. Your background experience, different employers that you worked for, the industry you were in. Uh, if you want to throw one or two numbers in there, you of course can. But it, everything that you've done in the past, kind of condense that down to one or two sentences. It's going to be hard. You might have to revise it a few times, but don't make it any longer than it needs to be. All right, experience, different employers, the job, and the dates that you were employed there, um, and then our bullet points. So just like uh, what we went over with the, uh, the transition between the, the military award bullet point and the civilian one, um, should be relatively short, one or two lines, having that, that action verb to start, what you did, and then the result of that. Don't overpopulate when it comes to the bullet points. You don't need 15 bullet points for each one. Just pick two or three of the top things that you did and just list those. And then coming up, we have skills. So again, skills are one of the things that you're probably going to find in that job posting there. So again, whether it's creating reports, uh, working with certain systems like SQL or Python, these are things that you're going to want to add to that as a skill. Coming down, you have education, uh, the degree, and then the school that you went to. Now, if you're just coming out of the military and you haven't gone uh, through college yet, if you're currently enrolled, you can put that on there. Uh, maybe make a side note on there, something like uh, currently enrolled or something like that, or estimated gra graduation date, 2024. Uh, but if you don't have any college at all, if you've gone to any type of leadership school, whether it's ALS or WLC, um, 
you could put that on there too, just as something that they're showing, you know, it's showing that you have at least some type of training, especially if it's something that's leadership based. And then finally, we end off with your strengths. So if we go back to that job posting, we're looking at different things. Uh, now, these are more of kind of like the soft skills. So the hard skill things are things like specific programs that you're working for or working with. So uh, looking at this posting, it could be uh, like the Python or the R, SQL. These different things are specific skills. And the soft skills are going to be things that are kind of more... Um, it's not as easy to to see them. So something like maybe like leadership or organization or detail oriented. These are things you, it's hard to demonstrate it, especially based off a resume. You can't put any really numbers behind it. Um, but these are keywords that you're going to find and things that you should put into, again, your strengths. But it doesn't need if it's something that you don't have, you know, don't put it on there again just because. The job posting has it these should be things that are relevant and things that you can actually uh, apply and prove to the employer over time the second type of resume format you might be working with is a functional resume so again this is for people that are newer to an industry or they're making a career change and looking at it here you see that it your experience and the jobs that you've had are way down the list and what's closer up to the top are going to be the different skills that you had. So if you remember in our uh, previous example, we had the, the strengths and all that down here. In this one, it's going to be much higher. So you have your strengths. Again, same thing. You have your skills, education, and then your contact information. Everything up top stays the same. But all you're doing here is you're bringing those skills and those strengths way up top because you want that to be the first thing that the employer looks at. So the final thing we're going to look at are going to be a few different resume examples that are optimized for that automated automated tracking system. So this is when you're applying for maybe a job at a, a one of the larger companies where you know that there's going to be possibly hundreds of different people that are going to be applying for that job. This is where it's really important to have those keywords and to make your resume as easy to read as possible from the perspective of a computer so let's take a look at this you see here I found a few great examples on this website it's jobscan.co I'll go ahead and link this below if you guys are interested in taking a look at it and they have a few different ones based off of uh, kind of the different situations so you have your classic formats senior level management mid-career and then people that recently graduated so you can download those take a look at uh, the different ones Find one that kind of works for you, but all of these are, again, optimized to something that the computer is going to be looking at, making it easier to read, to the high, give yourself the highest probability that your resume isn't automatically kicked out of the system. So this is one of the ones from the website. You see it's super clean, easy to read. You have your contact information up top. Again, we have our summary, one or two lines skills and accomplishments. Now, the thing I like about this is you have a skill topic. And then after that, you can kind of put the different skills that you have. So if we looked at something like computer engineering, you might put um, maybe the different different languages you worked with. So going back to our Facebook example, you could have uh, computer or software engineering, and then you can have SQL, Python, R, all these different things relative to that. Or if it's something like warehouse management, Maybe you have the different, maybe an in inventory tracking system that you use or something like that. So again, you have uh, two to three skill topics and then the specific skills after that. Next one down is going to be the accomplishments. So these are going to be those bullet points. It's again, the exact same format we saw on the resumes, uh, the examples from before. But we're putting this up to the top. So think of those top two or three bullet points that you have and put those right here. You see, as we come down to the work experience, you're basically just putting a summary, maybe uh, adding a little bit of context to what you did at each of the jobs, but it's not in that format that we saw before where you had multiple bullet points under each of the different jobs. So again, pick those top two or three bullet or two, two or three accomplishments that you did, 
put those up here in the accomplishment section and then uh, down here in the work experience to stick with the uh, summary of what you did and then if you need to add a little bit more information if it's something based off of one of those accomplishments and then finally the last thing you see at the bottom is that education so again uh, if you went to school at a college you can put that there or if you went through some type of military based school uh, that can go there as well so that's all we have guys i appreciate you watching hopefully you gained something from this again the links for the functional and traditional resumes are going to be below as well as the link to the website that has those um the automated tracking system resume uh formats and the the examples from that website so you can find that all below make sure you subscribe guys and if you have a veteran friend let them know about our channel and we'll see you next time